In this video I'm going to be working out an individual limit. It's going to be a trig limit. I am going to be taking advantage of this property, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x and that equaling 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to algebraically manipulate this limit and hopefully at some point get around to where I have a sine x over x because I do have some signs in there so hopefully that's going to give me that opportunity to take advantage of that property. So first off, I'm going to do a direct substitution just to make sure that I do have an indeterminate form on this one and would need to do this. So I'm going to do a direct substitution of plugging 0 in. That's going to give me the tangent of 0 minus the sine of 0 all over 0 times the cosine of 0. Tangent of 0 is 0. Sine of 0 is also 0. This is going to be 0 times cosine of 0 is 1. That's going to give me a 0 on top. 0 times 1 will give me that 0 on the bottom. So I definitely do have that indeterminate form of 0 over 0. So then I can apply my algebra properties to manipulate this in order to work out the limit. Now to begin with, what I think I'm going to do here, um, this tangent I think I'm going to choose to rewrite as sine over cosine. Since I have sines and cosines in this, things um, will start to cross out pretty nicely, I think, if we make this into a complex fraction for just a moment. So we'll take the limit as x approaches 0. We'll write that tangent as the sine of x over the cosine of x minus the sine of x all over that x cosine x. All right, now I do have, I have created that complex fraction. All right, now let's simplify that complex fraction by multiplying through by the least common denominator. The least common denominator in here is going to be that cosine x. So I'm going to choose to multiply through by cosine x. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by that cosine x. And as a reminder here, least common denominator is that cosine x. So that's why I'm doing that. This on top is going to have to be distributed. All right, when I multiply these two things, the cosines are going to cross out, which will get rid of the fraction, which is what we want to happen. All right, so then here we'll have the limit as x approaches 0. Okay, multiplying these two things, cosines cross out, so then I have sine x. And then multiplying these two things, um, I just multiply them together. So sine x, cosine x all over on the bottom here. Um, I'll have an x times a cosine co times a cosine, so I'll have two cosines, so let's write that as x cosine squared x. All right, now I'm going to take a look at that numerator, and I'm going to see that I've got two terms in there, and I do have a greatest common factor of sine x. So at this point, let's put here factor to help us remember, factor uh, GCF, greatest common factor out of that in that numerator because I think that's going to help us. All right, so in our next line here, we'll have the limit as x approaches 0, factoring out that sine x. So sine x, pulling that out. All right, in this first term, taking that out, I would have a 1 left over, minus, taking it out of the second term, I would have a cosine x left, and then all over my x cosine squared x. Okay, now at this point, I'm beginning to see this sine x over x, which is what we want for this property. I've got a rational function. I can separate that rational function into two individual rational functions. So the limit as x approaches 0, um, let's go sine x over x times everything else that would be left, 1 minus cosine x all over cosine squared x. All right, so um, you can double check yourself. If you can take these two fractions and multiply them together to get this, then you know you have legally broke those up into um, equivalent um, fractions there. Okay, now at this point, um, let's go ahead and write that extra step. I can take the limit of each one of these individually according to my properties for limits. So I can have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x all over cosine squared x. All right, now because of this property right here, I know that this one automatically goes to 1. And then on this one, I'm going to do a direct substitution. Okay, so the limit here being 1 
times. Now my direct substitution here would be a 1 minus cosine of 0 all over cosine squared of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so I'm going to have 1 times 1 minus 1 all over cosine 0 is 1 squared will give me a 1. All right, 1 minus 1 is going to give me a 0 right here, so 1 times 0 over 1. This is 0 times 1. Going to give me an overall limit of 0. All right, so a lot of algebra steps there. All right, however, if you have to justify where that limit comes uh, from and show all those algebraic steps, um, this is about the only way to do it. Um, with it being a rational um, fraction here and getting 0 over 0. You could have attempted L'Hopital's rule. That might have been easier. It might have been more hard. Not exactly sure which there. Um, so definitely, uh, thanks for watching. If the videos are helping you, please be sure and share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.